you're on a spiritual journey, period. And we're all gonna end up in the same place if there is such a thing. I used to be a guy who was experiencing the world and now I feel like the world and the universe experiencing a guy. All we really yearn for is our own absence. I don't want anything. That's the craziest thing and it's the weirdest thing to say where I have no ambition. Somewhere in the middle of absolute confusion, absolute disappointment, the fruition of all of my dreams, standing there with everything anybody else had ever dreamed about having and being unhappy. You know, it's not, it's not uh, Jim Carrey who can walk down the street just, just uh, you know, doing anything he wants to and get away with it because nobody knows you. You know, after a while, hopefully it'll be to the point where I can't walk out in the street. Won't that be fun? <laughs> where, where, where it'll be impossible to, to walk anywhere without being recognized. You're supposed to say, you know, we're important. You're supposed to say, it's all going to be all right. You're supposed to say, whatever you dream can come true. So I do believe in manifestation, power of that kind of stuff but I don't believe that any of it matters. All spirituality is about relieving suffering. You know, everything is divine. There's no, there's no thing that isn't divine. Everything is divine and I'm that. You go to the office and you put a monkey suit on and you act a certain way and you say a certain thing and you lie through your teeth at times and you do whatever you need to do to look like a winner. And then at some point in your life, you have to, you have to go, I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to face the abyss of not knowing whether that's going to be okay with everybody or not. The feeling of uh, wholeness is a, is a different feeling than meanness. I don't exist, so uh, they're all characters that I played. I played the guy that was free from concern so that people who watched me would be free from concern. Just like the movie, they try to drown you in the middle of that abyss. They go, no, be the other guy. You told us you were this guy. You know, no one can live with that forever. They're like, I don't want to be me either, you know? And I, and I go, well, look great, because you never have been. I mean, it looks great when you got a cool car and you got good, nice clothes and, and you've done something that people admire. It's not, it's not worth having this country. Everybody walks around and they go like, why am I depressed? Well, it's because you're trying to be something for the world. And as soon as you, you know, let that go, better things happen. And I wondered, who is it that's aware that I'm thinking? And suddenly I was thrown into this amazing feeling of freedom. I was no longer a fragment of the universe. I was the universe. Depression only happens when you're playing a character. So when I tried to go back and play Jim Carrey, I got depressed. You're going to have to either let that creation go and take a chance on being loved or hated, or you're gonna have to kill who you really are and fall into your grave grasping onto a character that you never were. My father was not only the funniest man in the room, but he was a fantastic saxophone player. And before I was born, he had an orchestra in Toronto. But, you know, in order to be something special, you had to leave Canada and come down to the States and prove yourself in the States. He was a little bit afraid of that transition, and, and also he had a family to take care of, so he became an accountant. And, uh, as time wore on, it wore him down, and he got a little bit bitter, especially when he lost his job when he was 51. Uh, that really broke him. Not only was he compromising to raise a family, but when you compromise and you fail, it really hurts. It hurts even more. 
and feeling of what you love. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm the proof that you can ask the universe for it. I would visualize things coming to me that I wanted or whatever. At that time, all it really was for me was making me feel better. I would drive home and think, well, I do have these things. And they're out there. I just don't have a hold of them yet, but they're out there. But it's important, especially for me, I would never show up anywhere if I didn't understand that everyone was broken in some way. Because ultimately, we're not the avatars we create. We are the light that shines through. The happy place is realizing that you're everything and that there's no real you involved in the first place. I have sadness and joy and elation and gratitude beyond belief, but all of it is weather. It spins around the planet. It doesn't sit on me long enough to kill me. How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? That's all you have to figure out. As someone who's done what you're about to go and do, I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is.